maybe. Let's see if it's true. A drum carter for preparing chippy fleeces to spin. And I've always, always wanted that one. I've been using little hand cards before this. And it takes so long. A couple years ago, I bought a sheep fleece. I was working on carding it. And then we got bean. And then he started eating all of my knitting and spinning stuff. So I had to put everything away. It's finally settled down, I think. I can get back to it now. And so, I bought, some assembly required apparently, this drum carter, which comes with, looks like medical equipment. I'll have to read the instructions. It's a, uh, Fancy Kitty is the, the brand of this drum carter. I've had it on my wish list forever, for years and years and years, I've wanted one. So the, the Fancy Kitty, I think it's just like a little husband and wife make their, their drum carter. Thank you, happy carding. A note from Fred. I adjust each carter and run it a while before packing it up to ship out. However, because of the rough handling during shipping, sometimes the drums do shift and need to be adjusted. The liquor and swift should be just far enough apart that you can insert a credit card between the two. Please feel free to call me with any questions. Fred. And I chose them because you can get somewhat cheap carters, but people usually end up upgrading those. And then you can get like really expensive ones. And this one seemed to be, from the research I did, just slightly more than the cheapy ones, but kind of same quality as the expensive ones. I don't want to like get one and then have to upgrade later. I just wanted to get a good one, but I didn't want to spend a crap ton of money on it. And by a crap ton of money, I mean this was $500 and I don't want to spend over $1,000. We might need to unpack everything and then come back to you fine people. Because it's going to take me a little while. Oh, to put it together. So I'm just going to unpack everything and we'll be right back. Oh, but it's an unboxing, right? So you want to see what it looks okay, like. So it, when people order it, they'll say, oh, that's nicely packaged. It is. So this is how it's all packaged. I'm going to take it out of all the wrapping. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll be back. Because nobody wants to watch me take bubble wrap off of things. Probably not. Is that how unboxings work? I'm oblivious to a lot of the internets. Well, usually it's just like, take it out of the box. This one's got... Got it. So we'll be right back. Paul. So what is that? I'm trying to find that out. Oh, okay. Because I don't know what these things are. I have no idea. Look, I'm, I'm thinking this is going to go to Check my... I think this is going to go to my handle. Oh, which my handle's right there. That's fine. See, on this side, I got like a little belt. Hold on. What is this? Um, it's a dog brush. It's sort of like... Blending brush, so you can just like. Okay. So what I've been using instead of this, and they're kind of dirty, but. Now this didn't come with it. No, Let's no. Make that clear. These are what okay. I've had. Okay. So these are the same thing, but the little hand carter versions. So you put fiber on them, and then you just brush it between the two brushes okay. to straighten it all out. And see, these have a lot more teeth per inch than this one. These have 120 teeth per inch. They're for cotton more than wool. Um, and I got the 120 teeth per inch because at the time I had an Angora rabbit. That's very fine fiber, so I wanted the... So I got 72 teeth per inch on this one. Okay, wait. And you have how many teeth on this? 120. Now what's the difference? This one's gonna be better for like wools and if I get coarser wools. The more teeth per inch you have, the smoother it's gonna be. Okay. But also, if it's like really kind of nasty, naughty fiber, it might um, it might break some of it. So you need this on a table, I assume. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on a table. Okay, because I was gonna say it's supposed to go all the way around. I'm assuming. Yeah. Right. We can put it up on that TV tray once we get it together. Okay. Yes, yes. Um, well, we'll get a better table actually. Right. But I just wanted to show you what I've been using. Okay. So this does the same thing. This is my one brush. This is my other brush. All right. And when it turns, see this brush goes, and then this brush goes, and right in between here, come see, come see. And so they're going against each other, just like these go against each other, Okay. but kind of like a continuous thing, 
and a lot more of it. So than then just you these. can actually double do a, time or triple time. Or, right, I can do a lot more at once and I can do it faster. Because these, you brush it. Right, that's just by hand. So you brush it this way. Right. And then you get it all off, put it back on, brush it again, get it all off, put it back on, brush it again. Okay. And then I can only do this much by this much, but now I can do this much, see it's the same with the cross, but the whole drum around. It's faster, it's more expensive, but if it's something that you want to do a lot of. Right, right, right. I like getting the fleece and I like cleaning the wool and I like carding it and I like spinning it, but I like doing each of those things efficiently. Yes. And so like, if I'm sitting for hours and hours and hours carding it, I'm like, I could be spinning already if I had this thing. Right. The only assembly, assembly required, according to the instructions, is handle, handle screw. Screw it into this. I'm gonna just use the back of my box cutter. Because that's safe. It's fine. Don't do this at home or something like that. It says, Get it on here tight and then back it off half a turn just so that the handle can move freely. It's on and then back it off half a turn and then there's a washer and a nut for the back side. I'll just... And now it has a handle. See? Only assembly required. This seems to go here just so there's like a tray. So this is probably pretty compacted because it's been a year or two since I've used it. I think according to the instructions. See it's all clumpity? Clumpity. And I think what I'm going to want to do is just kind of floof it and put it on. Whoops, put that down. And see, it just goes on. You just fluff a whole bunch and then I'll... So you don't want to put big clumps on. This is based on my extensive, you know, YouTubing of this process. I don't want that little nut in there. Just to see how this works. Ooh. See, then all this is going to form a bat up here. And what do you want to do with this? What is the point? Well, I separate it into all the colors because I was going to do a kind of a gradient sweater with the top being a darker color and the bottom like getting lighter and lighter. And I'm going to do a few passes through the drum carter because this is a pretty messed up fleece right now. I might even, because this is picking up a lot of stuff on the the liquor, I might just put it directly onto the the drum on the first pass. All right, I don't think I've got this quite full, but it's enough to kind of show you what's going on. I've been picking the fiber, fluffing it up, and then as it floops up, you can use this tool to, yep. All right, so then what you do is you find the seam. See this with no teeth? And you break the bat. I'm just going to use this here. They, they make a hooked one so that you don't have to get your hand in there. It's called the knuckle saving something something and I see why because you don't want to jab your knuckle into that. And some people have to clean their, to clean in between here because you don't want to damage the carding cloth so you don't want to use metal. Uh, I've seen people on YouTube have found that porcupine quills work awesome. Apparently you can buy porcupine quills. Who knew? Okay, so that's sort of in half there. And I'm going to run this through a few times because this is quite lumpy bumpy. So you just back it off and kind of in re the reverse of how it went on, it comes off. Oh, wow. And I mean, I'm leaving stuff in there. I could try to get it really clean, but... So how many passes would you make? Well, it depends on how smooth you want it. I'll right. show you when this comes off. All right. This is what I got so far. See, I went from this to that. 
Nice. So see, it's kind of going smooth in the same direction. You could spin it, but see, it's kind of all lumpy in some places. Okay, and the idea is to smooth all that out. It depends this. on what you want. Is that right. what you're... Right, it depends on what you want for yarn. You could spin this. You could even just... Oh, this turns into yarn. Right, so you could even just spin that, oh. and you'd end up with all these bumps. Okay. And this has some bumps. Depends on how smooth you want the bat to be. See, like through the light you can see. Okay, so viewers, forgive my stupidity. This creates a ball of yarn. No. And that, no. This okay. takes the wool from the, the sheepy. Yes. And it brushes it all nice and gets it going in the same direction. Okay. That way from here, I take some and I start spinning yarn with my spinning wheel. But I want everything going in the same direction so that it feeds easy between my fingers. My spinning wheel or a drop spindle or even just my fingers can make yarn. Okay. This Got it. prepares wool to become nicer, smoother yarn. Oh. So I want it definitely smoother than this. What even is that? That's like a pill before I even make yarn. The This fleece um, had some shorter staple pieces. It's the first fleece I bought. It wasn't like perfect. I am, I will learn from this. I just fell in love with the color and kind of the, the kind of gradient of color I could create from it. This is, this is my first try. I'll, I'll see what I can make out of it. All right, so thank you to the people who make the fancy kitty drum carters. It seems to be a, very good quality product. I will need a lot of practice to get good at this, but it will definitely speed up my yarn production and allow me to buy one or two or three more fleeces at the fair coming up.